A party for Nadine Angerer, the number one keeper for the German national women's team. At her request, it's being held with friends and fans in the bar Möbel Olfe in Berlin. Today, she's celebrating the publication of her autobiography, which contains episodes from her career. Even this bar is in it. I came here to the bar to celebrate after the 2007 World Cup. It was my first cup as the number one keeper. I don't remember much, but I know I was here. A world champion in the bohemian surroundings of Berlin's poor but sexy Kreuzberg district. For Angela, there's no contradiction between high life and normal life. It's the source of numerous stories. I always met Katrin here. My co-author is also a good friend. We'd always exchange lots of stories, and we thought, hey, we should write them down. They're so funny. I didn't have the kind of career you could call predictable, so there's a lot to tell, which I think will interest readers. So we said, okay, let's write it all down. But she lets her co-author handle the reading. When Tina Toya got on the telephone, the tone changed dramatically. Natsa, where in the world are you? I didn't understand. We're with the national team in Dessau. We're playing New Zealand. Oh, rats, I blurted out. There must be an invitation from the national team among all the unopened letters in my kitchen. Eventually, Angara established herself between the posts for the German women's team. My great advantage back then was that I was good and there wasn't much competition. Germany won the 2007 Women's World Cup. It was Angela's first time playing as Germany's number one, and she didn't concede a single goal. But all the attention made her want to leave Germany. I follow my gut feeling, and 99% of the time, it doesn't steer me wrong. I can rely on it. I know everything will make sense in the end. I've developed as a person at every club I've played for. Angra found peace of mind at Djurgården Dam Football in Stockholm, Sweden. The Swedish Women's League is one of the best in the world. Angara wanted to experience new things and see new places. I'm not the stereotypical individualist or introverted goalkeeper. On the contrary, I'm very extroverted and I'm always cheerful. The 2011 Women's World Cup in Germany. Expectations on the defending champs are high. Nothing less than a title repeat will do. The only chance we have is here in Germany, and I'm up for it. But it's not to be. Germany crash out in the quarterfinals. We were all under immense pressure. You feel responsible for doing a good job. At least that's how I felt. And I felt guilty for us being eliminated. Two years later, a new beginning. Germany coach Silvia Neid fields a young squad. By now, Angara is a veteran. The older you are, the calmer you are, so you can look out for the others. And Angara proves to be a good team leader and captain. The squad comes together and qualifies for the European final. Angara plays the game of her life, saving two penalties as Germany win the tournament. Clubs all over the world compete for her services. She gets a lucrative offer from a Russian club, but again, Angara chooses the path less taken. I ask myself, do I really want to go to Russia? It would have been an interesting experience and well paid. But I said, can I picture myself more easily there or in Australia? The idea of Australia was much more appealing than Russia. So I said, to hell with the money, I want some sunshine. And it was the right decision, definitely. Far away, down under, she learned she'd been nominated for the Ballon d'Or, football's top award. In the middle of the night, Australian time, my cell phone began to vibrate. I thought something bad had happened. And then I learned that I was in the top three, and I thought, now that's success. And Angara did indeed win the award for the best women's football player in 2013. I'm a very emotional person in general, <laughs> but actually, yeah, it's true, I was really surprised. And uh, 
Yeah, I still can't believe it. And I think it will take one or two days uh, to realize what happened tonight. But actually, I'm really proud and thankful. A year later, Angela lives and works in the U.S., but she's touring her homeland for two weeks to promote her autobiography. Today, there's a book signing in Potsdam. A chance for fans to see the star in person. She's a fantastic player, of course. She's our number one, the best we have. It'll be sad when she's gone. I think she's great, both in goal and then how she comes across as a person. I like her personality. She's a team player and has a good aura. She's confident and talented, and I like the fact that she seems a bit crazy. She's a role model. And the story isn't over yet. Angara is on a two-year contract with the Portland Thorns, but she'd like to play during North America's winter off-season as well. And she's looking forward to the 2015 Women's World Cup in Canada. We want to be totally focused and take things one game at a time. If you start dreaming about the final and what might be, you get distracted. And I hope we succeed in finding our way together. Kickoff wishes Nadine Angara the best of luck and more parties in the future.